Hey guys, Pogosick29 here. Welcome to my Bucket Paintball Coding mini-series. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be introducing you guys to the command. Now, I know that you guys already know how to do commands, um, and you're pretty good at them because a lot of videos we've made have commands, but I'm going to show you a really awesome way to make commands in a mini game because um, you're going to have one command like slash pogo ball or slash pb whatever but then you're gonna have a lot of arguments for joining leaving creating you know setting different spawn points um, all those different things there are gonna be a lot of sub commands so rather than store everything in one class and do a bunch of else if checks for the arguments I'm gonna show you guys a really efficient way of, and a very neat and clean way of going about it. Um, okay. And before we begin, just so you guys know, um, I saw that someone, I don't know who it was, posted this plugin on Bucket Dev. Um, please do not post this plugin on Bucket Dev because, like, if you take the code that I make and then you just upload it under your own name and maybe make a few adjustments like please don't do that I will probably upload it to bucket dev myself when it is done and I may possibly make some kind of a server out of it these videos are intended for you guys to learn how to do it so if you did put it up on bucket dev or whatever please do not put it up on bucket dev uh, just use the code to help yourself uh, if you put it on, if you put it on your own server, I can't stop you from doing that. But I would like to put it on uh, Bucket Dev if that's okay with all of you guys. The uh, second thing is, due to recent events, I will no longer be accepting um, Skype requests. So if you add me on Skype, I will not accept it unless you send me an email first, explaining to me why you want to add me and then I will consider it just because of recent events and um, some dangers have been pointed out to me in accepting random people's requests that are very uh, you know not very good so I will no longer be accepting Skype requests unless you first send me an email to pogotic 29 dev at gmail.com so without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started. This video will show you the command structure, and then in another video or two, we'll, uh, we'll actually make the commands. The reason why is because it will take a while to, um, you know, set up the command structure. So we're going to go ahead and make a new class called Command Manager. And we're going to do the same thing that we did with Arena Manager, all this code. So you can you can go ahead and copy it, but you just have to change arena to command manager. Is it static? Command manager and command manager. So we're doing the same thing. Actually, I'm sorry, we don't even need to do that because um, with the arena manager, you're going to need to access the arenas from multiple locations. With the command manager, you only need to um, instantiate it once in your main class when you go to register all the commands. So, the way that we're going to go about doing the arguments is this command manager class will um, implement, implement uh, command executor executor and this command will contain the on command statement, uh, but then we're going to go ahead and every subcommand will have its own class, and the subcommands will, you know, like join, leave, whatever. The subcommands will have their own classes. So let's go ahead and make a new package, and we'll call this CMDs. And then we're going to go ahead and make a new class, and we're going to call it subcommand. And now inside of here, we're going to write public 
abstract class subcommand. Now, I don't believe that I taught you guys about uh, abstract classes. If you guys know about um, interfaces, like the listener, anytime you implement something, that's an interface. An abstract class is very similar. Um, w let me just write a few things in here, and then it'll make more sense once I have some stuff here. Okay, now let me just explain to you how an abstract class works. So you'll notice that I have all these methods, but they end in a semicolon and not a body. What I'm going to do is, every time I make a command, and I'll show you an example, I'm not actually going to make the command, but I'll make the class. So let's say we want to make a command called join. So we're going to go ahead and write up here, extends sub command. And then you're going to see this little red line, and it's going to tell you that you must implement the inherited abstract methods. So what you're going to do is, you'll notice that all of these methods are abstract. And abstract methods mean that they don't do anything in this class, but in all classes that they extend, stuff happens. So, for example, in the join class, you need to have a public void on command, you need to have a public string name, a public string info, and a public string array aliases. Now, the reason why this is helpful, and not just making every class on its own, is because if we go back to our command manager, we're going to go ahead and make a private array list subcommand commands equals new array list sub, sorry, subcommand. Alright, and then we're going to do our public void setup, and leave that empty. Now, what we're doing is, this, in our setup, this is where we're going to add all commands. So, once the commands are done, once we start working on the commands, we, we will add them. We'll do, you know, it's an array list, so we'll do commands.add, and then we'll instantiate the command that we want. And the reason why this is really helpful is because, remember, the subcommand has this on command name info and alias which means that any class that extends subcommand will automatically have all of these methods so when we go and do our on command which we're going to do in a minute um, any command inside of that array list will automatically have all of those methods so we can be assured that we are uh, good to go there so in our join we're not going to actually make the join command but I will just show you that you will have a public void on command and it will take a player p and a string array of arguments and uh, just a few things it's a void because the you know the, the regular on command is a boolean but if you return false it just shows usage info which I think is incredibly stupid so it's a void. Um, the we're taking a player because we only want players to be able to execute these commands like joining and setting locations, whatever. Uh, we don't need that string command label because um, we don't need the command or the command label because this is just a subcommand. And the string array arguments is going to contain all of the arguments minus this one. So if the player does um, slash polo ball join one then the string array of arguments will contain it'll just be a string that contains one and that's that's it so that is that's basically the structure then you're also going to need a public string name and then we're going to say return join you're also going to need a public string info And this will basically, the info will be like, um, like in this case, join a game. It'll just be whatever, 
when when you run the help, it'll basically be a sh very short description of the command. Then we also need a public string array aliases, and we're going to say return new string array, and then inside of that we're going to write j. No, sorry, not k j, because we want to have our aliases. So you can do slash join or slash j. So this is the template for any subcommand excuse me that we're going to make and inside of this on command that is where you will um, handle the command whatever the command may be so now let's head back to our command manager and we're going to go ahead and make our public boolean on command command sender sender command cmd String command label string array args. Go ahead and import. Good. Now we're going to go ahead and say if cmd dot get name dot equals ignore case um, pogo ball. And by the way, we do want to do the um, if sender um, instance of player. Um, then we want to do uh, send message and then return true and uh, so what we're going to do now is really quickly we're going to make another class this class is called the message manager I personally like to have this class it's it's basically an easy way to um, to send messages because when you have a plugin like this, you want to have uh, all of your um, information be uh, uniform, like like all your colors. Because if you had, you know, random colors, then like if you just if everything was a different color, then it wouldn't make sense. But the message manager will allow you to easily make uh, send messages. So I will demonstrate that in just a second. So the first thing we're going to need is a private void msg, and it will take a player p, a chat color color, and a string msg. Or actually, I'm sorry, it will take a um, command sender s, because we don't because we want to be able to send the message to the player or the console or whatever. So it will take a command sender and a all right. Then we're going to say s dot send message color plus msg. Then what we're then what we're going to want to do is we're going to have our public void info, and this will take a uh, command sender s string msg. Then we're going to say msg s comma, uh, and then for info I'm going to go with yellow, but you can choose whatever you want, and then msg. And then you can go ahead and copy this for info, and then we'll have um, severe, like if there's an error. And instead, this will be red. And then we're going to have a good method. So if something good happens, like a command is run successfully, then we're going to go ahead and say chat color dot green. So that should be good for our message manager. So now what we're going to want to do is go back in here and we're going to say message manager dot get instance dot um, severe to sender and um, only players can use pogo ball. So what this will do is it will send the sender only players can use pogo ball in red and then it will return. So now what we're going to want to do is in our command, well first, if they don't type any arguments, then we're going to want to send them the help information for every command. Otherwise, we're going to want to attempt to execute the command. So let's go ahead and say um, if args.length equals zero, then we're going to say for subcommand c commands we're going to do uh, message manager dot get info dot um, info sorry info and also at this case we can say player p equals player sender 
and then we can say dot info um, to player comma, uh, and then we're going to want to say slash pogo ball, uh, and then we're going to want to say c dot get c dot name plus, uh, and then in and then we're going to go ahead and make a really quick little method private string args to uh, sorry we're going to say um what is it called aliases and then this will take a um, sub command cmd then we're going to say for string a cmd dot aliases and we're also going to have to say uh, string fin for final equals just empty and then we can say fin plus equals a plus that and then we're going to say um, return fin dot substring zero to fin dot last index of that and what that means is it will take the command that we give it it will go through every alias and then it will add the alias plus the pipe as a separator and it will then return the um, the uh, a substring of that to the last index so that you won't have that last pipe because we don't need that and we can also go ahead and go like that and then we can say fin plus equals um, sorry all right, so then we can go ahead and say plus aliases for uh, C, or actually plus this plus aliases C plus that. So then that will show basically it's saying slash pogo ball command name, then it's showing all the aliases. Then we want to do a um, a dash to separate, and then we're going to say c dot info, and then that will be the short description. And then we can go ahead and say return true. So that is that's what we do there. Then what we're going to want to do is if they say an argument that is valid, or no, if they have an argument, then we're going to want to say um, sub command target equals commands and sorry we're going to need to make another method um, private subcommand get for string name and then we're going to say for subcommand cmd uh, commands so we're iterating through all the commands and we're going to say if cmd dot name dot equals ignore case name return cmd and return null. So we're going through every single command. If that command's name is equal to the command name that we want, then return that. If not, then return null. So we can go ahead and say forget args zero. Then we're going to want to say if target equals null, then uh, message manager dot get instance dot severe to player, and it will say. Um, Oh, it'll say um, slash pogo ball um, args zero is not a valid sub command and whatever, and then just go ahead and return. So if they're so if they try to run a command that does not exist, then we want to send them that message. Now what we need to do is we need to get the arguments, and we need to remove the first argument, and then we need to um, run the command. So we're going to go ahead and write um, ArrayList string a equals new ArrayList string a dot add all args. I don't think this will work. Okay, our a dot add all arrays dot as list args. 
So then what that will do is, we're creating an array list of strings, we're adding every single argument, then, we, then we're going to say a.remove0. So we are removing the first argument, which is, if in the case of slash pogoball join, it will remove join, and then we are going to say args equals um, a.toArray new, sorry, new string array um, a.size. And we're basically setting this args value equal to um, this array, and we're putting it, we're this array list, and we're putting it as a string that is the string array that is the same size as the array. So essentially, what all this code right here does is it takes the arguments, it removes the first argument, and then it sets the arguments to whatever they were minus the first one. Then we can go ahead, and I believe we want to say try target dot on command p comma args and we need to do catch exception e so if for whatever reason some kind of an exception is thrown and uh, then we're going to want to say um, message manager dot get instance dot uh, severe sorry dot severe to p comma um, and you can also call like um, like we can say e dot get message I believe we want so so we want to say um, an error has occurred and then we want to say I believe it's e dot get message that we want e dot get I believe it, yeah, I think it may be e.getCaused, dot get cause because that should, so if it's like a null pointer exception, then that should say an error has occurred, null pointer exception, or whatever. Um, you know, you can play around with that. If you don't want it to send them any kind of a message, then you don't have to. And you're also going to want to say e.printStackTrace, because, um, you want to send them a message telling them that, that an error has occurred, but you also want to print the stack trace so that you can access it from the console. And then finally, you just need your return true. And I guess this needs to go down there. Good. Now we are without errors. The very last thing that we're going to do in this video, which is running for a very long time, is after we set up the commands, we're going to go ahead and say, um, we're going to go ahead and say command manager cm equals new command manager cm dot setup then we're going to say get command pogo ball dot set executor uh, cm so we're creating a new command manager we only ever need to make one of these we don't need to access it anywhere else we're setting it up which means adding all of the commands to the array list, and then we are setting the executor of the pogo ball command to uh, the command manager. Uh, I'm not going to make a plugin.yml in this episode because we did not, I'm not going to, there's nothing to test yet, but um, before we test, I will make a plugin.yml. It's just a standard, um, you know, registering the plugin.yml plug with the pogo ball command and probably a pb alias. So that is all for this video. I hope you guys learned about um, command structure. Um, this should help you really in, in any plugin that has a lot of um, arguments and whatever. This should be really helpful to keep your commands nice and organized. So um, as always, subscribe if you want to see more. Comment with what you want to learn. Don't forget to check out the plugin submission guidelines. Uh, if you add the little graphic there to your plugin's description and send me a message or leave a comment, I will uh, and I will uh, take 30 seconds out of my video to um, to showcase it and you know, but and then leave a link in the description. So if you want your plugin to be seen by all the people that watch this channel, all you need to do is add that little graphic to the bottom of your description. And I will see you guys later today or tomorrow. Goodbye.